is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. 
You have anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and loving kindness. Amen. In making confident with his people, God gave the Israelites the Ten Commandments. Let's listen to these commandments recorded in Exodus chapter 20 as a reminder that we are all sinful. It is only through the grace and work of Christ that we are able to reconcile with God. First, you shall have no other gods before me. Second, you shall not worship idols. Third, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Fourth, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Fifth, honor your father and mother. Sixth, you shall not murder. Seventh, you shall not commit adultery. Eight, you shall not steal. Ninth, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbors. Tenth, you shall not covet. We know that we have not lived as God hopes, but however fragmented we become, God longs to hold us locked together in grace and peace. Let us come with our prayers of confession and need to the one who prepares the way for our words. In this moment, remembering God, we bring to you all the ways we have not lived as your people. We stand by watching while those in need struggle to survive. We cast our lots with those who worship power and success. We offer insults rather than words of grace to those who care for us. We scoff at your words, which call us to a different lifestyle. Forgive us, God of mercy, for not knowing what we have do, we, we do to you, to others, to ourselves. Speak to us through Jesus Christ, our King and our Savior, who bears words filled with your tender mercy and gracious hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. With calming words, with a peaceful spirit, with overflowing love and hope, our God forgives us and fills us with faith. Our God affirms us for who we are, those whose brokenness is made whole, whose sin is forgiven, whose lives overflows with faith. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Let us worship this morning together our God. Silence, fear. 
Let us pray. Oh God, powerful and compassionate, you shepherd your people, faithfully feeding and protecting us. Heal each of us and make us a whole people that we may embody the justice and peace of your son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
For the first Bible lectionary. Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 1 to 6. Woe to the shepherds who are destroying and scattering the sheep of my pastures, declares the Lord. Therefore, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says to the shepherds who tend my people Because you have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not bestowed care on them. I will bestow punishment on you for the evil you have done, declares the Lord. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them and they will no longer be afraid or terrified nor will any be missing, declares the Lord. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. This is the word of God. Thank you. Now for the Bible, second Bible lectionary. Don't forget, Jews and Gentiles used to be outsiders. They were called uncircumcised heathens by the Jews who were part of their circumcision, even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from the people among the people of Israel and you did not know the convenient promise God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you've been united with Christ Jesus. Once you were far away from God, but now you've been brought near to him through the blood of Christ. For Christ has both brought peace to us. He united the Jews and Gentiles into one people when in his own body on the cross he broke down the wall of hostility that separated us. He did this by ending the system of law with its commandments and regulations. He made peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in himself one new people from those from the two groups. 
together as one body, Christ recognized both groups to our God by means of his death on the cross and our ability to warn each other with put to death. He brought this good news of peace to you, Gentiles, who are far away from him, and peace to the Jews who are near. And now all of us can come to the Father with the same Holy Spirit because of what Christ has done for us. So now you Gentiles are no longer strangers and forgiven news. You are the citizens among with all of God's holy people. You are, you are members of God's family. Together we are in this house built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus himself. We are carefully joined together and becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through him, you Gentiles are also being part of this community where God is by spirit. And this is the word. Taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not even have a chance to eat, he said to them, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. Then Jesus landed and saw a large crowd. He had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed in Gennesaret and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognized Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever he went into villages, towns, and countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak. And all who touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. from Samuel. She's the assistant to the Bishop of the Alberta and the Territory Synod, and she's going to preach among us. Blessed greetings to you, dear brothers and sisters. On this eighth Sunday after Pentecost, hearing the gospel according to Mark and preparing for this sermon, I want to confess that I am feeling hot, sticky, and tired. It is about 34 degrees, and I have a whole week of this ahead. How I feel this dry, hot day reflects how I have felt the past number of months. I turn to Facebook for some escape because I usually enjoy pictures of people's camping trips on the lake, the flower gardens, beautiful baby pictures, and family events. But what I found there was populated throughout social media and the news stories of the great injustices. The injustices perpetrated on our Muslim brothers and sisters the horrors of the residential schools that have been coming to light these days. These issues, along with concerns of climate change, gender inequality, and many such more are of great importance. But for just a few blessed minutes, I want to find an escape from all that needs to be done, all that needs to be challenged to voice, just to find that peace. Quickly enough, that quest for positivity becomes swallowed up by the darkness I was hoping to avoid 
for a few precious minutes. When I check out the news feeds from my family and friends in India, I find the same thing waiting for me. The grim realities of COVID as my country of birth faces levels of death and trauma due to the virus, which some have referred to as genocidal in nature. Of course, that doesn't even take into consideration the migrant workers seeking work or refuge or find a way home. The numerous atrocities towards women and young children, students, so on. I feel helpless knowing that I am half a world away and can do nothing to help. All I can do is pray and hope that God will see my family and my country through this horrible time, and I worry. The COVID realities here in Canada are fraught with uncertainty. The province I am currently living in is set to open on July 1st, and many await it with anxiety. It will be wonderful to see everyone again, to do the many things we have put on hold. And through that anxious joy, there is that worry, worry that this might perpetrate another wave. We do not want to go through any more lockdowns, but we certainly don't want to see any more loss of life either. Needless to say, I am exhausted. Deep in my bones, deep in my soul, and I know that I echo the sentiment shared by many. We are exhausted. In our gospel, Mark, tells us of the disciples returning to Jesus from their missionary work, all excited but what, by what they have done and taught, the many things. That excitement reminds me of the day when my grade one child returned from a hot field trip day to the zoo. He was so excited to tell me all about his day, all about what he saw, what he did with his friends, then he did not even give any thought to the heat of the day and that he had been walking throughout or most of it and possibly very tired. As a mother, my first thought was, did you eat your lunch? Did you get enough to drink throughout the day? Did you drink your water? I wanted to ensure that he was well and cared for. In our gospel, responding to the disciples, Jesus recognizes them and offers them the invitation for rest and nourishment. They are invited to eat and rest, knowing that soon enough they will need to be out and about again, healing, teaching, and proclaiming. But for right now, rest is far more important. Without it, they will not be able to do what they have been called to do. How many times over the past many months have you rested? When I say rested, I mean truly rested. The soul rest that leaves you nourished and feeling alive. The soul rest that is so needed after the soul work, the spirit's work that comes out of passion and love, out of compassion for speaking and doing, for proclaiming the gospel. This soul rest has certainly been a challenging one for me throughout this time of COVID. Along with negotiating the world we live in, to negotiate education for my children, care for my families, ensure that the call I have been invited to serve is done well. To worry about loved ones' health and well-being, 
not even to mention the exhaustion from weeping for and with our indigenous siblings for climate change, challenging discrimination against persons of color and disabilities, against the many oppressions, injustices, hurts. This is soul work, my friends. And this soul work is exhausting. It needs the soul nourishment, the soul rest. But these days, there isn't time for soul rests and taking the kind of nourishment that brings fullness to the soul. I'm sure that, like me, you have had to make do with the driblets of rest, most of which feel like catnaps, when what we need is the long, real soul rest. When Jesus offers his disciples this rest, there is a part of me that wants to call out, me too, please. I need that food. I need that rest too. It sounds so wonderful to rest, to be in the presence of Jesus. Perhaps that sentiment was shared by the others outside of the disciples, for they came running they recognized them and they came running. They were seeking something. Perhaps it was the healing or the wholeness, or perhaps it was just standing in the presence of Jesus. In seeing them running eagerly, he has compassion. He goes out to them in that compassion. And as the disciples rest, Jesus continues that soul work of teaching and healing. Many, like the Syrophoenician woman from our reading on June 27th, are content just to touch Jesus' fringe. In that moment, that moment, they find the rest the love, the wholeness that they need. We don't know all of what they have been facing, but it was likely not easy. The Romans, the Judeans, elites would have made life difficult for them, but in Jesus, they found life. And it was enough just to touch the fringe of his cloak for that life. It was enough for them to find the healing they needed so that they could just keep moving, just keep living. In this moment of our history, we need that rest in Jesus. We echo the needs of the disciples. We echo the needs of those who came running, those who were brought to Jesus whether we are trying to help negotiate the church through this unprecedented time, or whether we are trying to hold on, just hold on, our very being cries for relief, for hope. We are crying out for our God. And as Christ does, he comes to us in compassion. He comes to us offering that peace, that rest. Christ gathers us in and bids us to rest. To put those burdens down just for now. That is not to say that we are no longer needed in the world. Soon enough, we do need to set off once again and be agents of Christ's love in the world. We also need to rest, to be renewed, to be those agents, to be nourished, to find succor for our souls. We need to find that healing and peace that only Christ can give 
or we risk being taken down by the very cares we are trying to address. And mind you, as he did, as Christ did, as Jesus did that day, while the disciples rested, he continued to heal, touch, nourish, and care. In our need, Christ comes to offer us the food, the rest, knowing that we will go back out into the world. And in these moments when we rest, knowing that Christ continues that soul work of healing and teaching, we rest in Christ to be strengthened, to get back to where Christ is, already speaking, to speak and give voice along, already challenging to challenge along, already healing to heal along, to teach, to nurture, to nourish and compassion, all alongside of Christ in that compassion, alongside of God to go and do the soul work. We are needed to be the hands, the hearts, the ears, voice, eyes of Christ. But for now, knowing Christ continues that soul work of compassion, we are invited to rest, to renew so that we may go out with that renewed strength to clearly see, to clearly do with refreshed hearts, to passionately love and challenge with revived hope to heal and to forgive. Christ grants us that peace restores our hope, helps us to see again that we, you and I, my friends, are valued and loved always so that in turn we may value and love God's children. To this God who in challenging and calling us to be the missionaries of justice, missionaries of healing, missionaries of peace, invites and reminds us of the peace, the healing, the rest bringing wholeness to us as well. Always giving glory to this God. May we join together and say, Amen. Thanks be to God.
pray. Dear God, we thank you that um, you promise us um, that you will continue even when we're weary. We pray, God, that you give us rest and you give us peace in this um, time of turmoil or trouble. We know, God, that you're with us. We pray that you give us this um, peace that surpasses understanding that we pray that we can rest our souls and be nourished by your word and by your spirit. We ask God now that you pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, fill us up so that when it is time we are able to pour into other people and to be ready to show compassion and to join you in your work. And we pray God that we grant those who are tired and weary may we be able to relieve our burdens and our anxieties down at your feet that you um, can care for us and comfort us that we can be ready when you call us we pray this in jesus Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together and the opportunity to worship and talk to you. We all have our struggle. Sometimes the issue we face may seem impossible to resolve and causes us to be restless. And yet, you tell us in Luke chapter 18, verse 27, the things that are impossible with men are possible with you. In fact, you love it when you work out the impossible. Then there's no questions who did it. It had to be you. Lord, Help us to keep our mind on you and how big you are when our circumstance started to weigh us down. Help us to rest in you, Lord, to remember you are sovereign and in control of everything. And even when things get difficult, Lord, you are bigger than any problems we could possibly have. We come to rest in you when we feel weak. We come to you for guidance when we are lost. Trust that you will give us peace wisdom, and strength. We continue to remember those in need of your grace and mercy. We pray for Alpha. We pray that you have helped the attendees to come to know you. You are the truth, the way, and the life. Open the hearts to have the leap of faith to come to you, how, to know how gracious and wonderful you are. Pray for summer camp. We pray that the campers and the staff come to experience the love of God through our words and actions. We pray that our participant will have a safe and joyful experience. We pray for families and very affected from the damages caused by the tornado and may they experience your grace in the recovery. We give you thanks and praise to those who recover from their sickness. We continue to pray for those who are sick among us, those with weakness, weakened bodies and broken spirits. Bless them with healing. Change their circumstances, cause healing to come to them, especially Vicky Fung, Cindy Lo, Han Wa, Mr. Chung, Sydney Luke, Venice, Edward, Stephen, who's recovering in rehab, Gracie, Jerry R, and Luke L, who are fighting cancer, and those and those whom we remember in our hearts. Praying as the city move into step three, as complete opening of complete opening. May you continue to give each and every one the wisdom, patience, and love to stay strong and healthy. Lord, show the sheep of yours where the still water is. You are the one who will restore our soul. You will prepare a table for us in front of our enemies. God, let us stay in that place of solitude with you where we can be refreshed. We trust in your mercy. We pray in the name of Lord, our, Je our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven. 
hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's now proclaim our faith together with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Us, providing all that we need in abundance, the shepherd calls us to love one another in truth and action. May our gift reflect our trust in the shepherd's care and may our offerings show our willingness to love one another. Let us pray. God of love, you abide with us. You provide for all we, our needs and guide us in your ways. Out of gratitude for your care, we bring our gifts before you. Use them for your work of caring that all may feast at the table of abundance, walk without fear, and drink deeply from the cup of compassion. Amen. Let us receive God's blessings together by faith. Go now with your trust in a good shepherd. May God lead you to places of rest and renewal. May Christ Jesus give you life in abundance and may the Holy Spirit fill your hearts with gladness and generosity, both now and forevermore. Amen.
go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you. 